Hello there, welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about Derzu Yuzala, which is a Kurosawa film from the 70s. It was made in Russia with the help of Russian government as well as the help of a Japanese company. It was uh, Kurosawa's first film in, the, in I think about five years. He'd, um, he'd split after Redbeard with Mifune. He made a film that had bombed completely, even though it got some nice reviews. So he was in bad shape financially and psychologically. This was the film he made just before he started to come back with Ran and Kikamusha and then Dreams. So this was like um, the film we made in the wilderness of the 70s before the, um, the Americans who were big fans of his had the power to help support him. But this is a very good film on its own. Um, it did really well in Russia, it did very well in Europe. It did okay in America, but it's Cold War, so they're not going to do that great. But um, it was a success overall. There was talk of doing more, of course I was doing more in Russia, but it never panned out. But it was soon back to Japan doing his, doing his um, historical films. But this is a, a film that he really wanted to make. It, it was, they asked him, the Russians wanted to have an international director come and work with them. They asked him what he wanted to do. He suggested something that someone else was really working on. I think Baratuk from War and Peace was working on something that he really didn't want to do. So they said, you have anything else? And he said, there's to Uzala, which had a film made of it in the 60s. But the idea of doing a Kurosawa version of it got people interested and they decided to finance it. And it was a terrific film. I mean, this, I, I'm kind of weird. It's like, um, if, with Kurosawa, I, I tend to like, like, I like his films, but I don't love them. I'm not like Salty Ronan, who's a massive fan of him. I like the films, but he's, there's other directors in Japan I like more than Kurosawa. It's that thing is like, uh, you don't want to say, oh, I hate him, because I don't, but I generally am not as big on him as other people. But I like this one quite a lot. This one's probably one of, my, one of the ones I like most from Kurosawa. I also really like Redbeard. But I'm not so hot in Rashomon. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I have a weird taste in Kurosawa. Uh, but anyway, before I go on, this box set from Imprint is really good. It's lots of um, interviews with the leading man. You get um, a commentary. You get like a, a film essays on, on it. It's terrific. Just seen that before I go into the main film. I just thought it would be better to mention it now before I forget because I would forget. Um, so the film is about this uh, guy who goes around areas that have not been explored and draws the maps so that people can move forward and expand. Russia can expand out because you need to know where you're going ultimately. So they send these map makers out to explore these areas and areas that have been unexplored so they can then plan ahead and try and bring industry to that area. So this just takes place in Russia before the revolution. So this is when um, there was still a czar, there was still capitalists, they were still trying to expand and make money. And this geologist, uh, no geologist, this map maker, he runs into Desiree Zala, who's a trapper in that area. He, he keeps away from the town, he keeps away from society, he's not really into that. He he had a family once, but they died, so he stuck to himself. And he just goes around as a trapper, but he knows the land really well, he understands the land, he understands the superstitions of the land, the changes of the land, the, um, is it going to rain, is it not going to rain? He understands all this stuff just by the weather and how, the wor how this world works and how this, you know, the landscape of the just just the the way this the areas that he knows works so he just understands them, which becomes very helpful to the map maker, and as they go through their adventures, so it's, it's split into two parts really. You've got the first adventure when he meets Derza, and then there's a second adventure set a few years later when he went and does again, and it's two different adventures of them. You know, going around the country side of this, running even drawing the maps and the dangers that they face, 
and him learning that Dares actually knows so much that he'd be dead without him. And Dares uh, is a kind man, but he's not a worldly man. He'd easily be conned because he doesn't... He thinks the best of people, or tries to at least, and tries to give back to the world. And he's just someone who's made peace with the world. He's made peace with where he is in, his wor- in the world, and he's... He's he's fine where he is. He doesn't need money, and he's fine helping out this guy, just for food and for whatever shot they can give him for his gun. He's good with that because he sees that oh he's been drawing maps. That's great, good thing. So he just goes along with him. And it's about the relationship between these two people: one who's very worldly, and one who's really not. And it's based on the the, the map maker's um, book about his experience with this trapper and and, and basically he's looking back on the time because he goes there and he finds that the, the the dangerous area that he'd mapped out is becoming um, is getting changed into towns and which was a, was a plan in the first place but a lot has been lost in the process like civilization coming means you lose a lot you lose a lot of danger but you also lose a lot of the charm of the old world and the adventures you see in this story are when there's a show them how the land works, how dangerous it can be at times. Like, you don't want to lose track in certain areas because then the snow's going to hit and you're going to be dead. And if you get trapped there, you have to, there's certain ways to survive, but you have, to, they're fairly exhausting to do. And you get to see all of that as they make mistakes, as they have to deal with certain things, as they have to deal with the Chinese who are, expanding upwards into their area and uh, these Chinese trappers are viewed as animals by everyone and they're getting hunted down and sent back, sent packing. So you've got that kind of, that kind of uh, historical data being thrown your way and you've got a sense of a world that's that is moving on, that is trapped in an older time and it's probably been going on for a while this way and now suddenly it has to kind of change so you've got that sense of the world that's of Derza that hasn't really moved on and it's enchanting to watch it really is very enjoyable to watch so I had a great time watching it um, but as the film goes on you start to see Derza actually getting older his eyesight's starting to go. He can no longer shoot and, and find things that he used to be able to find without a problem. He's becoming superstitious because as if he knows his time is up, like um, life is moving on with film. Some, he sees some of the superstitions he has to survive are insane, but they're from an older society that just isn't very modern. It's just not the way they go. Again, that's fascinating. This this takes place the second time they find him. They have to go and find him to help to get help, and eventually uh, they find him and they they start mapping and you, you get to see adventures like on a like like on a river. There's one point where there's a the the, the, the thing they kind of raft they have gets out of control and you have to save Derza from it. And uh, there's lots of really cool, interesting sequences. In the first half, you have a great sequence of the red sun, and as as the, as the sun goes down and, and people can take the feast there, there's some really terrific like adventure set pieces here. But the main point is the character stuff. Is there to show the character, which really works. But as as um, there's a son becomes too old to survive there, the map maker takes him home, but he can't survive in the civilization either. So he's a doomed character. I won't, see, won't uh, reveal the ending, but you know he's doomed. But um, I won't reveal how it happens. But it's a wonderful film. It's just beautiful. And the acting's terrific from the two lead, ca- lead actors, especially the guy playing Derza, who had not acted on film. He'd, he'd be a theatre actor, a local theatre actor, in the area they shot the film that people knew about, and they suggested him to Kurosawa. And since Kurosawa saw him, he's like, yep, that's him. Even though he didn't really look like the historical character, he had the attitude right. 
So it's like, yep, use him. That's it. That's who we're having for this character. And the lead actor of coming back is good, but he's also an actor who knows he does not have the lead. he he he's technically the lead, but he's not got the title character and the other parts better than his part. But he's good with that. He just okay. I mean, he understands it's a supporting role, but he has to show grace and let the star part happen. Now the film was shot in not the best um, film, really film stock. So Kurosawa wasn't happy with certain things, but it still has been restored really nicely, and you get this kind of terrific atmosphere to the film. It's not one of Kurosawa's. It's probably not viewed by many as one of Kurosawa's best but for me it's up there just because I really enjoyed the film it just was one of those ones that's like yeah it's a bit long but I didn't really mind there wasn't wasn't any real any real pain involved because it, it felt like you needed those moments to slowly build to the end and I don't think it would have worked without those moments that might have been a little too long but it doesn't matter because I think they really built to where you need to go I think if you'd try to cut down too much you'd have lost some of the humanity of the film so you kind of needed the episodic nature of the story to unfold the way it does and have the, f the film go in different directions that you're not that you know where it's heading but it goes in different directions than what you expect sometimes to get there so but in subtle ways it's not like in any radical change of like direction in a major way just uh, it's just some subtle character points it, it shifts different ways you expect but um, it's highly recommended I'm not sure if the imprint version is still available, if it is I recommend getting it if not just try and find it wherever you can because it is a wonderful film right that's me for now on this one um, I hope you enjoyed the, the video go see the film